Today I have one of the easiest thrift store makeovers that I've ever done. It's going to be an upcycled wreath. My name is Cindy. I'm with Reinvented Delaware. We love to reinvent and repurpose all sorts of home decor and furniture. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to upcycle a thrift store wreath that I found recently for only about $8. Let's get started. You can find these wreaths just about anywhere. I found mine at one of my local thrift stores that I frequent about once a week. I walked in the store, I spotted it right away because all of the seasonal decor was together. So it was easy to find this holiday wreath for the fall and Thanksgiving era. The colors were a little bright for me. I just did not wanna go that strong of an orange color, but all the pieces were there, all the components. And at $8, I knew I was getting a really good deal. If I had purchased these pieces separately, the small pumpkins, the wreath frame, the greenery, actually they were like old looking leaves. They looked like brown leaves. If I had purchased all those separately, it really would have cost me well over $8. So for the cost of a little bit of paint, it was well worth it to reinvent this wreath for my home decor. You see it here in the background. I have mine hanging indoors. You can of course put this on your front door. The first step to do is to disassemble this wreath. Now the base of my wreath was made from moss covered wire and it was pretty heavy. I would say it was about this thick. I don't know how thick that is. Three inches, I don't know. But it was completely moss covered. So when I removed those pumpkins, there was a lot of the glue and the moss left on the bottom side of that pumpkin. I just had to pull off all the moss that I could and I knew that I could disguise it again and not show that part of the pumpkins. So I decided to go with it. I cleaned them off the best that I could. The other thing that I did was after I removed all of that and those adorable brown leaves, which in their prime probably were very pretty floral picks. They were just tired. So after I removed all that, I took that wreath form and I lightly sprayed it. I went outside and I did a light coat of a white spray paint just to lighten up the color a little bit. Hindsight, I don't even think that that was necessary, but I did it just to lighten up the color a little bit. Once I had all those pumpkins removed, and believe me, I had quite a mess to clean up because the moss was dry, so it was all over my workbench. I got my shop back out and I cleaned it all up. Once they were all removed, I pulled all of the stems out. They are not a bad shape of the stem, but the color green and the plastic, not my thing. So I pulled them out. Actually, I wound up using them in another project and I'll be sure to link that video. Anyway, once the stems were all the way removed, I decided on three neutral colors that I wanted to paint these pumpkins. And I wanted three neutral colors just to give it a little bit of layering and texture so that they weren't all the same color. I chose some colors from Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint line, and I'll be sure to link those all in the description down below so you'll see those colors. Once the painting was well, all finished, and by the way, I did have to do two coats to cover up that orange color, and that's fine. I painted them and I set them aside on my workbench to dry. I had some faux greenery lying around from another project. You know, you pick up this faux greenery at Hobby Lobby when it goes on sale, and then you just have tons of it because it's so inexpensive. And I I like to keep it on hand to make little arrangements out of. It's just very handy to have on hand. And I took sections of that, I cut it apart off of the main stem, off the main pick, because it was pretty, it was pretty long. It was about this long. And then I just tied on sections of that using some little bits of raffia, and I tied that in a knot and I trimmed it so that it would look like it was part of the wreath. And the raffia just adds a little layer of texture, another layer of texture. And then after I got them all tied on, I went back and I added more of the raffia because I really like the fall look that that raffia brings to this wreath. The next thing was to replace those plastic stems. So a few months ago, maybe even a year, my husband and I pulled out an old hydrangea bush that was no longer blooming. Long story, I won't go down that road, but we removed this hydrangea bush and it left a lot of roots in the ground. Well, the roots are very crooked, like they're not just straight roots, they're kind of crooked, they have a lot of little nubs on them and all that, and I found a whole stack of them, a whole little pile of them out in this area of our yard. So I went through that pile and I picked out little sections of the roots that I thought looked like a little crooked stem and that would be perfect for these little pumpkins. And I also looked for roots that were kind of narrow, about the diameter of my little pinky and in fact they were about that long and they were all kind of crooked 
So I grabbed myself a handful of those. After I grabbed the collection of roots that I knew that I would needed that I needed for my pumpkins. I forget how many I used, six. I needed at least six little root sections to be the stems. I took them over to my pumpkins and I just pushed them into the hole where the plastic stem was. Very easy. I did use a little bit of hot glue to make sure that it, was, that it would stay in there. And then I also had some little faux leaves that as I was pushing it into the pumpkin, I stuck that leaf in there as well. So it looks like it has a little leaf, a little bit of green growth coming out. And I think it's just the perfect look. The next step was just to reassemble the wreath. And that was the simple part. Now this wreath came with eight pumpkins. I decided not to use all of the pumpkins that came with the original wreath. And I only chose to use six of them. So I was basically using two from each of the three colors that I had painted the pumpkins earlier and I laid them out. I just laid them on top of the wreath to make sure that I had placement good. And then I turned some of the pumpkins inside and out so they weren't all sitting on the top and they were kind of sitting a little bit cattywampus around the wreath and I hot glued them on. Now listen, I put a lot of hot glue on there. I put a lot on the bottom just like the previous person had done. I put a lot of hot glue on the bottom and I pressed it into that Spanish moth wreath, wreath and I just held it really still until it dried. So at this point, I've spray painted the wreath lightly with a white spray paint, which by the way, wasn't necessary. I added the extra little greenery that I had lying around and I tied on those sections with raffia. And then I hot glued those painted pumpkins on in various spots around my wreath. The last step was to grab a hanger and I keep wire. I have this brown craft wire. I'll link that below too. It's a wonderful spool of wire. You're, you're going to love this. It's a great craft supply. And I use that just to make a simple hanger on the back so that I could hang it. Now you have to hang that, you have to cut that wire at whatever length you need for where you want to hang your wreath. For me, it worked out perfect right here. And in fact, against those antique doors that I have that you see it hanging on, you can't even see the wire, it completely disappears. Now, I haven't decided if I'm going to add this raffia bow. You can see here in this image that I was thinking about it. I have this raffia bow. I just grabbed some of that raffia that I had. I made a simple little bow and I just held it up there. I can't decide if I like it or not. I'd love to hear from you. Should I hang that raffia bow on this wreath or should I get like a ribbon bow? I don't know, you suggest to me what you think I should do. Or maybe I should just leave it the way that it is. I would love to hear what you have to say about a bow on this wreath. I'd love to offer some other ways that you can decorate with a wreath other than the traditional of hanging it on your front door or back door. You can use my idea and hang it inside. Now I have my wreath, you can see back here, I have my wreath hanging over top of these two antique doors. We found these doors, the glass was missing, so we replaced them with chicken wire. That's a very common thing. I love that look because the chicken wire can provide a space to put family photos or with the holiday season coming up, I could put Christmas cards around there or with Thanksgiving coming up, I could put little messages of things that we're thankful for all around on that chicken wire. That would be really pretty, but I love the wreath it kind of is framed out with those cabinet doors. Another way to use this wreath would be to use it as a big candle ring. You remember those candle rings that are like faux floral, they're so pretty and you put a pillar candle in the center. Well, you could take this and have a, a candle in the center of that and I would make sure that it's a flameless candle, maybe one of those battery powered candles. You could either do a trio of battery powder powered candles in brass candlesticks in the center of this. That would be really pretty. Or you could just take a pillar candle and they have big ones, you know, four or five inches in diameter and put that right in the middle and that could be on your coffee table. Another idea is to hang this wreath near the entrance where the majority of your friends and family come. Do they come to the back door? Our, our home is a backdoor kind of home and I think a lot of us have the same kind of concept, but most people enter from the back door of our home. So I was thinking it would be so great to hang this wreath near the back entrance just inside in a pretty little spot and then put some scented oils on the wreath. Scented oils of scents like the, like the fall, like cinnamon cloves, pumpkin pie, I mean all those kinds of smells and you could get some essential oils 
in those scents and put drops of it on that wreath and it'd be a really nice way to welcome your guests. The last idea that I have for you is to hang this outside, maybe on your back patio near a fireplace. I'm sitting next to our patio. Our French doors are right here and just out on our back patio, we have a wood burning fireplace that we love to sit at outside. I could hang this wreath on the outside, put some battery powered lights. I know that's such a 90s thing, but I still like it. I could put some battery powered lights in this. And then as we're sitting outside enjoying the fire, we'd also be able to enjoy that wreath. I hope you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, join our journey by subscribing down below. Give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment how and where you would use this wreath. I'd love to hear it. And I also need to hear your idea about a bow for this wreath. I'll have a full blog post linked down below and you can see this tutorial over on my blog. And by the way, I'd love you to join my news newsletter so that you don't miss any of my blog posts. I'll leave a link for that down below. Just sign up and I'll send you projects right Right to your inbox. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.